My friend Marty suggested that I do a short little video on uh, using a two-tone test to look at the linearity of a single sideband transmitter. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, do a short little test here with this ICOM 703 QRP transceiver. We're going to generate a couple of test tones with this uh, uh, signal generator here. Uh, one at 750 hertz and another at 1.33 uh, kilohertz. And uh, that means one of the important conditions for this test is that the two tones that are used are not harmonically related. Those two tones are going to be quickly added together in this little quick little summer circuit here. The output of that is going into a speaker. And I'm going to couple the microphone to the speaker just to kind of make our measurement pretty simple. And then we're going to sample the RF output through my little RF sampler we looked at in another video. And then we'll take a look at the output on the, trans on the, uh, on the scope. So let's put the camera down here by the scope and uh, we'll talk about this test. So uh, when you put a single audio tone into a single sideband transmitter, it basically creates a CW carrier. Uh, that carrier is at the uh, suppressed carrier frequency, in this case 7.2 megahertz, uh, either plus or minus the audio tone. So um, it depends on whether we're looking at upper or lower sideband. In our case it really doesn't matter. We are testing actually for lower, on lower sideband here. So, uh, so by, when doing this, um, you know, you can look at the, the single tone, uh, single uh, carrier frequency of either one. So if I key the transmitter, I can key the transmitter and talk, and this is kind of what we looked at the other day and being able to see the modulated output, but how do we know if we're linear or not? So uh, let's go and look at this thing uh, with the two-tone test. So if I put the microphone by the speaker, and I turn on the 750 hertz tone, I can see I've got uh, oh about two divisions of, uh, of, ma of magnitude there, if you will, of the signal. So that's good, and that's kind of our reference point. Um, but you really can't tell whether we're linear or not. Let's look at the other tone. We've also got about two divisions of uh, deflection there as well. And that's the other important condition for this test, is that you want uh, both of the two tones to create uh, the same uh, RF amplitude. Uh, at the output. So you can adjust the sign signal generator to make that happen. Now what will happen when I turn both of these on, they're going to beat against each other. Basically, uh, well, they'll periodically constructively uh, add up and destructively add up and create a beat pattern. The beat pattern will have a frequency that's equal to the frequency difference between the two tones. So if we turn on one tone and then the other, there's our beat pattern. And that's exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you want to see this perfectly linear uh, type of uh, response, meaning that uh, you've got a nice sinusoidal variation. You know, in the envelope, you're crossing right at you know zero, completely quenching out, and you've got this nice uh, sinusoidal pattern. That's uh, a nice linear transmitter. Now, I'll give you an example of what it looks like if we do something to make it nonlinear. Like if I increase the gain of this, uh, the optical, uh, the audio signal here. Okay, now there's what it looks like if we're nonlinear. You can actually see some flat topping here. The signals are not beating linearly against each other anymore. We're not completely squelching out at zero. That's your indication that we're you know, this transmitter is not behaving in a linear fashion. And now we return the gain back to normal, and that's uh, what it looks like when it uh, is operating in a nice linear fashion. So you could also make measurements of uh, you know the peak-to-peak -peak voltage here. Um, and actually make measurements of power and things like that if you chose to do so. Uh, the, the, if you calculated power from the peak voltage here, that, that would actually be what's called the instantaneous peak power. Uh, for the two-tone test, winds up being uh, exactly double the, um, the peak envelope power that you would normally get if you calculate peak envelope power in a normal way. So, But just a kind of interesting way of uh, you know, kind of being able to go and make uh, these measurements here and looking at linearity.